Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday service. As we begin our time together in worship, if we can, let's also pr let's pray for uh, the oldest group of our uh, brothers and sisters, the TNT group, uh, that consists of Isaac, Alicia, Hoon, uh, and Caleb. But if we can, let's also pray. Uh, I'm sure you guys have uh, watched the news or heard what's been going on in, Tex in places like Texas, Oklahoma, people who have uh, been hit really hard with a snowstorm and they don't have power, they don't have electricity, they don't have water. So uh, uh, it would be great for us if we can pray for them as well as we uh, begin our time together in worship. So if you can, let's join our hearts together and let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to gather together in worship. We thank you for uh, shelter, we thank you for family, we thank you for our church, and so many things to be thankful for. Uh, but Lord, we do pray for those uh, our who are living in the South and Texas and Oklahoma and other places that are currently under severe conditions because of the snowstorm. Uh, we pray uh, that you'll continue to provide for them and may they know in, in spite of uh, the chaos that you are still in control and maybe um, you've allowed these things to happen so that they can realize that their only hope comes from you. So Lord, uh, we pray that you will help them to uh, find shelter and find water and electricity and hopefully they are able to recover quickly But well, more than that help them to ultimately find uh, True comfort in Christ and Christ alone. But well, we do pray for our, our TNT group pray for Alicia for Caleb for whom for Isaac we pray Lord that you'll continue to help them to grow as, uh, as, as uh, Men and women of God they're the oldest uh, members of our group. Maybe they're getting, as they're getting ready to transition uh, sooner than later to a youth group uh, and even to uh, another grade. I do pray, Lord, that you help them to know that uh, they're not just gaining age, but they're also gaining in wisdom and gaining in knowledge. And I do pray that above everything, help them to fall in love with you more and more each day. Help them to place you ahead of everything else and help them to make you the center of their lives. So Lord, thank you again for allowing us this opportunity to pray for our, our, our older group uh, of brothers and sisters. I do pray that you will continue to use them to shine the light of Jesus to those around them. Thank you again, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends, let's all stand up and let's sing this song together this morning.
As we continue in our worship, let's all recite the Apostles' Creed together. Are right, you guys ready? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Welcome back. As we uh, begin our time together in the Word of God, I just want to ask you guys a quick question. Friends, have you guys ever watched a movie called Mission Impossible? It's a movie starring an actor uh, by the name of Tom Cruise, who is a secret agent that goes on these missions that seem impossible. It's not just one movie. There's a series of movies. And each time you, uh, I watch the movie, it seems as though that he always goes on these impossible missions but somehow, uh, for some reason, he always manages to pull them off. The reason why I share this is because in today's passage, Jesus shares with us that we are also called to be on a mission that seem impossible. As Christians or as people who follow Jesus, He tells us that we ought to show kindness like no other. Kindness that this world has never seen before. Kindness that seems impossible. Today's passage comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 41. So if, you, so if you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me to Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 41. Are you guys ready? Verse 38. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. This is God's word. Thanks be to God. In today's passage, we see Jesus teaching to a crowd of people that have been following him around during his ministry. And starting with chapter 5, Jesus goes on a mountainside and he begins to share with all these people that have gathered about how God wants his people to live. Kind of like in the Old Testament, um, the Ten Commandments that Moses received uh, uh, and, and the people of Israelites were required to live by those Ten Commandments. Uh, but this time, Jesus is introducing new, a new commandment, a new way of living with Jesus. And out of the many things that Jesus shared, in today's passage from verse 38 to 41, we see how Jesus talks about showing extra impossible kindness. A kindness that seems almost impossible, but a kindness that Jesus desires for His people to show. A kindness that is willing to turn the other cheek if someone slaps you on the right. A kindness that is willing to offer even more to someone who is thinking about taking advantage of you. A kindness that is willing to go two miles when you are only required to go one. So what does this kindness look like? And why does Jesus require of us of such impossible kindness? You see, back in the day during Jesus' time, the people of Israel were under the Roman rule, under this leader, named Caesar. And because of this, although they were from Israel, although they were Jewish, they still had to obey and follow the laws of the Roman Empire. And one of those laws said that if a Roman soldier, uh, a Roman soldier is allowed to ask a Jewish person to carry any of their belongings for a while, for a mile. And if the, Jew, uh, if the Jewish person was asked of this, they cannot refuse. The law was that if a Roman soldier asks you, hey, carry my helmet for me, carry my backpack for me, the Jewish person has to say yes and has to carry it for the mile. It can be a helmet, it can be a very heavy armor, it could be a backpack, whatever it might be, no matter how heavy the item might be, you are still required to carry for at least one mile 
That was the law. No questions asked. However, Jesus teaches that if you are asked to carry it for one mile, we see in verse 41, you should carry it double the amount. You should carry it for two miles, right? We see in verse 41, if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Jesus is saying double the amount. That might sound crazy, but Jesus is saying that's the kindness that we should show to the world around us. That's the kindness that Jesus is requiring of us. Jesus is saying kindness is more than doing what we're told to do, but it ought to be excessive. It ought to be almost of an overflow. Why? Because when you make choices beyond what you're required to do, you are showing the person just how valuable and precious they really are. For example, maybe your parents ask you to clean your room. You might think you're being kind by listening to them and obeying them by cleaning your room. But what if you also decide to clean the bathroom? What if you also decide to clean your parents' room and even the living room? You're not required to do it, no one asks you to, but because you value your parents so much, you want to show extra kindness. Or maybe your sibling asks you to help them with their homework. You might feel like it's a burden or you have to because you're the older sibling. But instead of helping them as fast as possible so that you don't have to deal with them anymore, what if you volunteer and tell your sibling that you're going to set aside a time every day, 10, 20, 30 minutes a day, where you offer yourselves to your sibling and tell them that you care about them and they could ask you any questions they want about their homework. You're not required to do it. No one asked you to do it. But because you value your siblings so much, you want to show extra kindness. Friends, this is exactly what Jesus is reminding us about true kindness. Jesus didn't need to rescue us from our sin. He didn't need to go to the cross. He didn't need to die. He was perfect and sinless. However, because Jesus values each and every one of us so much, He wanted to show extra kindness so that in return, we too can be like Jesus and show kindness to those around us. Friends, kindness is not about simply doing what we were told to do or simply doing what we have to do. Kindness is not about doing the bare minimum so that we can get something in return. Kindness is just is not just doing what we have to do because we're told but it's about doing things even when you're not asked even when you're not told because you want to do it you want to because the person is valuable you want to because Jesus first showed kindness to us you want to because they too are loved by God and created in the image of God so friends let's try to show extra kindness this week not because we have to, but because we want to. Let's try to be kinder than we have to be, because by doing so, we are showing others the love and the kindness of Jesus Christ. We are all called to this impossible mission of showing extra kindness to those around us. It's a special, special calling. And it might seem impossible, but as we depend on God and pray to Him, He will give us extra patience. He will give us extra love. He will give us extra ability to show kindness to those around us. Amen. So let's pray this morning. Let's pray to him. God, thank you so much for this morning, allowing us to learn from the book of Matthew and how you call us to show extra kindness that might seem impossible, but it is only possible because we depend on you and we ask you to enable us to do so. So Lord, we can honestly say that there are days where we are not the kindest people on earth. Lord, help us to be extra kind to those around us because we genuinely want them to also know the kindness of Jesus Christ. When we are impatient with people, when we are frustrated or angry, help us, Lord, to look to you and see, Lord, and be reminded of this calling the special calling that we have received to show kindness 
and be extra kind to those around us because you first have been kind to us. We thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, friends, at this time, let's go into a time of offering and let's say this prayer together. Lord, I give my life as an offering to you. Amen. Friends, I hope you guys have a great week. Um, we are going to do something special for Easter as it is coming up very soon. Although I don't think we are able to meet together in person, uh, we will do our very best. We are, we're planning uh, to have a special Easter service all together. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, if you guys ever have questions about our Sunday services, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, but just know that you guys are cared for. We love you guys and we are praying for you guys. So uh, hope you guys are staying safe. Hope you guys are doing well in school and hope you guys are uh, applying each and every week's lesson and showing kindness to those around us. Love you guys. Hope you guys are safe. Let's all stand up and let's close together with this song together. Let's close together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen. in
endless love I know What you give to me is not for me to keep It's for the world to see your love you give to me 